Hey all, this is the next installment in my Devise mini series of basically customizing Devise, the gem in the Ruby on Rails framework. So um, over scoping series is let's build with Ruby on Rails. And then within that, I'm doing a series on Devise itself. Since it's quite an extendable gem, we can customize and make, you know, custom relative to the app or whatever preferences you might have. Uh, so we've done a few videos so far that I think this is the third and I'll do quite a few more because there's a lot of features to talk about But this one's gonna be a quick one in the sense of customizing your routing when it with regards to how device sets up the say sign in flow or sign up flow or any other thing you could declare so we can customize the way that looks in the URL because usually it's a your domain slash users slash whatever and you can customize all those things so what I'll do is create a new Rails app. I'm gonna use my kickoff Tailwind template. Um, you can find that on GitHub. I'll link to it in either the description of this video or on my blog. If you go to the blog, you can check that out. And if you haven't used it before, it's just a quick and easy way to get a Rails app up and configured, at least to my specs. You can certainly customize it in the future or use another uh, project that you uh, created with a, some friends called Jumpstart or Jumpstart Pro. Uh, so go check that out at jumpstartrails.com. And without further ado, I'm going to create a new app and we'll just say Rails new. And I'm gonna call this, uh, let's see, device custom routing. And I'm gonna pass in my template, but my template's local to my system. So this won't be the same for you unless you download or clone that repo to your same folder. It's sitting in my sites directory right now. I'm, I'm already in my sites directory uh, just to show you of where I'm at relative to my system. So you'll want to download that or reference it. And this is how I'm going to reference it locally. Since I have it in a kickoff tailwind folder, I'm going to go ahead and pass M to declare. I'm going to use a template to scaffold this project. And it's going to be in this folder called kickoff tailwind. And then I'm going to pass the relative path to the actual template and mention. So template.rb. So when this actually fires off, it'll reference that. Uh, do the typical Rails scaffold and then go ahead and create some configuration based on everything in the picture of that template.rb file. Now, the main thing to note here is that it does set up device by default. So there is some configuration with regards to device itself that you need to do if you're doing this completely from scratch. I've covered that in previous videos, so check those out. Um, but more or less, it's a quick and easy win to get installed. Just go check the docs if you're having any issues whatsoever. So I'll go ahead and run this and report back in just a second. Awesome. So with everything installed, I'll scroll up a little bit just to show you what happened. We've got all of this stuff that just initialized. I'll go to the very top just to kind of make it from top to bottom. We did a Rails new and it has quite a few dependencies from the Ruby side. So we go ahead and copy that. It looks like my, my history here is capped, but essentially creates the uh, bundle install kind of concept. So it'll go ahead and fetch all the gems native to Rails and the stuff that's in our gem file in this project. And then within that, it actually runs a generation for a webpacker that comes by default in Rails 6. I should mention I'm using Rails 6 and Ruby 2.3 right now, 2.6.3, excuse me. And with six, you get Webpacker by default. Uh, on top of that, I use Tailwind for this kickoff theme or template. And Tailwind CSS is just a, a utility first CSS framework that I like to use. It's very quick to create components and scale up something quick. So if you're prototyping, I think it's a perfect candidate or even in a large app scenario, I think it's a great tool to use. So you can create scalable CSS, which is often quite hard to use Webpacker. It does depend on Node.js, so we have quite a few dependencies in both the Rails side and then Babel and other core libraries used with Webpack. So all that stuff eventually gets your code compiled down to like ES6 and ES5 compliant code that works in all browsers, and that's the whole point. Uh, but there's crazy amounts of dependencies, which is crazy, I know. But aside from that, we've got everything installed. Um, if you find this warning of no package.json file, this is commonly the case if you have a package.json file at the root of your user account in your app and your computer. Um, if you don't, if you have one there by chance, you can delete that and you might see this go away. I, I haven't done it 
on this computer. I've done it on another one and it worked. Uh, but I just wanted to point that out for some reason. Um, aside from that, we've got all the dependencies with yarn and then we're doing some of the setup I've got in the template.rb file. So you see here is actually where the De um, device gets configured. We run this generator. It goes ahead and creates these two files, but it also spits out these directions, which I've actually included in the template to just go ahead and copy stuff like this into certain file names or spaces in the file. We go ahead and generate the device views. So those are already in the app. We don't have to go ahead and run that command on our own to get that set up. Um, there is some routing that gets generated. So we'll see that in a second, which we're going to focus on in this video. Um, but aside from that, we go ahead and set up Tailwind here. I do kind of a, a more of a uh, manual approach to setting up Tailwind that, that isn't like a gem or anything. We're using the, the latest beta, so I probably need to update that to just use the latest CS or v, V1. We're using a beta version of Tailwind, which is fine, but it's kind of tricky to use betas sometimes. Um, but Rails itself is in a beta still. Anyway. Uh, we did install friendly ID with this template, which is just a unique way to create URLs that are pretty instead of just ID numbers, which is common you see with new Rails apps. And aside from that, we get all the data stuff migrated in the database, which is SQLite to start with, but that could translate to PostgreSQL or MySQL. And then we do a git init, so everything's actually initialized already for git, so that's great. So at this point, we get CD into that app just by copying and pasting this. And then I'll just run Rails server just to verify it works. So again, you see that bit there. I could just remove that coming up. I won't worry about it right now, but that is something I wanted to note. So I'll open Firefox. So I'll go to localhost 3000 and give it a sec. I think Webpack is compiling. The first initial comp compilation takes some time. Uh, but when it does finally do, you get the base template look and feel here. So I've got the kickoff template, nothing fancy, but device, as you can see, is already installed and set up and configured and customized. So I like that about it. I have a username and name field that was added custom to device. Usually it just comes with an email and password set, set up by default. So you'd have to extend that. So you can see how it saves you a lot of time uh, if you're interested in such a thing. Okay, so the main focus of this video, aside from all that setup, is just getting our routing in order. If we go to log in right here, we get users sign in, which is fine, um, but it's not exactly intuitive to someone, say, coming to the site. So maybe you wanted to scope that to be nothing. So maybe it's just sign in or even your own custom, you know, path there. So like maybe like sessions or auth. So it could be sessions or auth this will error out but because no route matches that but we could customize that stuff with device based on the actual routing conventions brought from the gym so if i head to the actual code the main focus of this i want to get into is in the config di directory into the routes directory and we've got our code here that's set up this stuff was added by my template you can kind of ignore it but essentially there's just an auth uh, user concept of authentication that anything within this block would be need to be an admin and we're passing a Lambda block to go ahead and, and ensure that. So any user that has an ad, uh, admin attribute, which we have in our database schema of, I'll show you, we have a Boolean here. The default is false. So if it were true, then that person can actually see those paths. Otherwise they can't. So Sidekick, for example, I don't really need any public facing user to see that. Aside from all that, we have our root path set to a home index. That template itself generated that stuff by default. So I have a home controller with just an index action. Um, and within that, we can just go ahead and set a root. Um, I did that mainly because the device requires some sort of root path to begin with. And the reason for that are the flash messages or redirections that it does when you say log out or something like that. There needs to be some root path defined for it to know where to read it direct you to. So I'll go back to the config routing. That's what we're going to focus on. Now on top of this device for users method, there's a quite a few properties you can pass. So it could be anything from custom controllers to custom uh, routing for the login and scopes. 
of those things. So what I'm basically going to do is configure our path to be unique in such a way that I just want the um, path names to be customized. So if, say for sign in or sign out, we can customize what those would look like. So I'll say path and you can either pass like a custom scope here, like auth. And I'll show you the difference here in a second. And then you could say path names. And here's where you define whatever you want those to be. So by default, there are methods already uh, signified by the gym. So sign in is one of those, but you can customize the actual string that might say. So say instead of sign in, you want the login. You kind of commonly see that out in the wild or sign out. We'll say log out. So if I were to, usually you need to restart the app at this point, and I will just do that. So I'll go back to the app. If I go to this user sign in, you notice that route doesn't exist anymore, but you notice our routes do have auth login. So that's kind of cool. So say you wanted to customize that, we go to login and we'll get that same route as before. So you see how quick and easy that was to customize. Now you can do that for everything here too, like sign up, uh, you know, all these things. You notice that the auth namespace stays the same, which is great. And you can customize what the password, say forgot password, you can customize what that says too. If you wanted to, you just have to reference the docs to go ahead and do so. So instead of saying auth, I feel like no, that's not quite intuitive enough. And I want people to just assume, well, if I want to log in, if I just do slash log in, would that work? And I think that should be a good route to go. So instead, if you just leave this string empty here, save that down, reset the app there, just do a refresh and notice it's just slash log in now. So I can get rid of the auth namespace and go straight to log in. So that's pretty much all I wanted to get out of this um, in terms of, well, we could say sign up too, let's do that because that sign up looks gross to me. Sign up, we'll say register maybe. Yeah, so sign up's gone. If we go to register, boom. So pretty cool, yeah. That's basically what I wanted to, wanted to translate in this video. I wanted to make it quick, but also one that maybe you weren't aware of. So uh, Devise is quite extendable, and I love that you can just do quick and easy wins like this to make your app truly customized and unique to your own branding. All right, so that's it for now. Th uh, thanks for watching. If you like this video, there are many more coming in the Devise world, but also check out all my Ruby on Rails stuff. And also my course, if you're new to Ruby on Rails, there should be a quick blurb about it at the end of this video. You could check out more. It's at hellorails.io. All right, guys, thanks for now. Peace. Hello Rails is my new course on Ruby on Rails. I'll teach you Ruby on Rails from the ground up. Visit hellorails.io for more information.